So yeah, man, I feel like I feel like with the that sketch situation, you know, between truth and image, you know, realistically it could have been 50-50. If he was true about it, then you know, maybe some people would have gravitated to him, and then some people would have not gravitated to him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I, I feel like I feel like it, for that situation, it could have been 50-50. With the truth and the image thing, it's like when you're posting content, and it goes back to kind of what you were saying, is that, is that regarding about like image and like faking it till you make it, it's like you could do that, but like we said, if truth gets out, now everybody knows that's like, all right, bro, like, why couldn't you just been straight up yeah. from, the, from the jump? From the jump. Um, and we, I feel like all three of us know a lot of people that like faked it till they make it, but then some of those people that faked it till they made it really made it. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Where realistically, it could also be some big artist or celebrity that's like, how did that person really, really make it though? You know what I mean? Because, you know, I don't compare myself to anybody. I try my best not to. But if there, if I ever catch myself doing it, I'm like, I don't know. I feel like I feel like it brings like negativity to me. You know what I mean? Where it's like, oh, I'm better than this person, or but it's like, nah, I cut that out real quick. You know right. what I mean? Um, because they made it, and I'm like, I'm over here. It's like I'm really trying to make it. But they, it almost looks like they got the easy way out. Right. But then I try, like, I honestly, I don't even try. I shut it down real quick. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because <clears throat> I don't want to, I don't want to think like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, I, I think it's, I think it's interesting because I think all of us can agree that society wise, it's image over truth, but individually it's truth over image because yeah. I, I say this a lot and I, I tell my fiance this all the time. I say, if I did not, if, if I had lower, I don't want to say inhibitions, but I guess like conscious, if I didn't feel so guilty, I, I would have already made it by now because I would have been able to lie, create a persona because I, I, I did it for 90% of my life. I, I created a persona and it got me by damn near everything. Mm-hmm. And had I stuck with that, it was going to get me somewhere i started a podcast it was called the unsolicited podcast and i created a character on there called barlow now if you if you guys are tuning into my my documentary at all this is kind of a spoiler so spoiler alert but the the character of barlow i said was a fake character but what it really was was the persona that i had been living my whole life and to do what i was doing on that camera on that microphone was literally like nails on the inside of my body. And after every recording session, almost every recording session, especially the ones where I'm, I was really bad, like self-deprecating, after everyone left, I would either throw up or feel very nauseous. So like that, it's like, dude, like we were getting to a point where we were getting a good following. We were getting like the kind of business partners where that, that would be the stepping stone before we made it. Like the in-between spot. And that is where I had my meltdown. And I said, guys, like, I want to continue the podcast, but I want to be myself. And they said, okay. And I said, I want to be August. And then someone said, oh, so you just want to be the cool guy. That's when I realized I fucked up. I fucked up because I wasn't myself. August has been my entire life who I felt inside, who I kept in my music. That is truth. But image, I gave the world Barlow for 20 years. What would what would my world be like if I had given them August my, since I felt like them 20 years? You see what I'm saying? So that goes to the question, image versus truth. And I feel like our answer is, when it comes to mental health, truth is important. Correct. When it comes to society, image is important. Correct. Do you guys have any like closing remarks on this? or? Well, kind of what you just said, too. It's like how you felt you were right there before the breakthrough. But like, think about artists, bro. Like Travis Scott. I don't know bro's name. Like Post Travis? Malone. Post <laughs> Malone. I don't think it is, bro. And Travis like Juice Scott. World. Like yeah, Travis, all these people. He was on. He was on. I forget whether it was on Jimmy Fallon or Jimmy Kimmel. And his uh, it was something where I remember Travis Scott took something of Kid Cudi. Yeah, that's what it was. And his uncle's name. Yep. 
and basically mashed uh, it together. I, mm-hmm. If I'm not mistaken, I think his real name is Jacu- Jacquees. Yes, it might yeah. be his That's right. That's real. Right. His, might be his real birth name, but like, you know, he just put something together, and mm-hmm. I mean, no. That's one, the thing, bro. If people, if people either don't like look at either documentaries of him or didn't watch that late talk show, they might still think. Yo, Travis Scott's real name is Travis Scott. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, no, you make a good point on that. Because it's like these artists, bro, like that's what everybody knows them as. No, correct. You yeah. have you have five million people a month listening to your songs, but they only know you as like Travis Scott. Yeah. And it's like, who are you really as a person? But your persona now, your job, your career yeah. is Travis Scott. Well, it's actually, yeah, it's funny that you love that. Yeah, yeah, it's funny that you mentioned that because I, I remember somebody telling me something where um, these two guys was, uh, like talking. One of them was my boy, this other guy, like, I don't remember his name, but he told me a story that he asked him, was like, Hey man, uh, do you know Trevor Baker? And the guy was like, who's that? He goes, mm, you don't know DJ Trevor Baker. Trev. He's like, nah, bro. I just told you who is that? He goes, bro, DJ Trev. The other dude was like, Oh bro, I've known him for years. <laughs> and I was like, at that moment in time, like, I don't, think big headed or anything but at that exact moment i'm like wow like my actual legal birth first and last name is in a quote and way at that very moment like non-existent yeah. right people still know me as trevor yeah you know what i mean or they'll just say trev but i don't know bro it's just it's weird when somebody just comes up to me and was like oh what's up dj trev and it's like thanks but that's not actual my my real real name yeah. my real name is yeah. trevor but you know it kind of kind of goes back to that Travis Scott thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like the only people that call him by his real birth name is like close net and bro. family members. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? 100%. Because my mom's not like calling me from my room being like, yo, DJ Trev. Like, <laughs> hey, yo, DJ Trev. <laughs> Take out the trash yeah, or something. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not like that. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, man. So, you know, you know what I, lo- I love about this topic is I have never worked with a PR company, a PR team. But uh, I'm putting this out there now. I'm going to because I feel like what we are supposed to do with the PR team is tell them, look, this is who I am. Package that in a way that people can consume it and relate it to. Because at the end of the day, all of this stuff is about relatability. Can I relate to you? Like people relate to this is before Kendrick Lamar stuff. Right. But people relate to Drake because of like the feeling of essentially sensitivity in relationships that you know you fucked up. Yeah. Right? That is like the gist of it, right? It's like, you, like, being in love with a stripper is not what necessarily what he's talking about. (laughs) You know what I'm saying, though, right? Like, that's not necessarily what he's talking about, but that is what people are relating to based on the music. You know what I'm saying? So, and, and I could be completely getting that wrong. I'm by no means PR, but what I'm saying is if that, if who I am is a mental health guy and I'm a guy who kept my lyrics tracked inside. I'm not PR. But what I need to do is go to a PR team and say, hey, this is what I stand for. This is who I am. Could you make that in a way that is a more identifiable persona? Because what that is at that point, that's not lying. It is telling the truth, but it's packaging it in a way that is consumable. It's marketable. Marketable. There you go. It's yeah. marketable personality. Versus like, Someone's like, okay, so what you're going to need to do, so you're a party guy, you make party music. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to the club every week. And it's like, bro, I fucking hate the club. But now I so, now I have 5 million monthly listeners. I have brand deals. And you're making 20 grand a night. So I, how the fuck am I supposed to not keep this up? We all crash at some point. Correct. Every single one of us. So I want to move the conversation forward outside of just the artistry and outside of like image versus truth. When we talk about mental health, we talk a lot about the generalities of mental health. But right now we are three men having conversations and going back to the beginning of this, of this conversation, we did say men's mental health. And I do feel like men's mental health gets overlooked, but Trev, you made a good point earlier about, you know, we should talk about it as just mental health. So I have a question for both of you. Is it important for us to separate men's mental health and mental health in general. Zay, I want to start with you. I don't I don't think we should separate it. Um, I just think we should make sure we know all the details in each. And that's just that's 
covering all categories. So expand on that a little bit. What do you mean by that? So it's like, like we were saying, like men's mental health is is one way. It's treated a certain way, Mm -hmm. but it's like anyone who identifies, anyone who's gay, straight, any ethnic background, whatever, like it's different for everyone. Because like I have friends that are, grew up in like, um, like just different backgrounds, whether it's parents treating them differently because Mm. it's all respect you're not allowed to feel a certain type of way to people who are just guarded their whole lives. Yeah. And it's like, I think based on your background and your environment, like you grow up in a mental health household a certain way. And some people uh, can deal with it differently. Some people have better support. Some people are like, I don't have any resources. I feel like I can't speak up about it. So mm-hmm. it's like, I feel like you need to address each situation differently. Right. And yeah even though it is very general and it's super big and like not talked about, like if you're talking about men's mental health or anyone else, you just need to know all the details and how it's treated first. Correct. Right. Trev, what do you think? I, I mean, you, Zay hit all the, you know, the, the spots over. My, my thing is this, is that there's a stigma about men's mental health, but me as being a male, I feel like mental health is mental health. Facts. My my personal thing is that I don't want to use the phrase. I don't care. I've never been a big fan of that phrase. But yeah. but then again, in this particular conversation, I don't want to use the phrase I don't mind. But I don't care if you're male, female, gay, straight, transgender, uh, transgender, et- like ethnical background. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Mental health is mental health. Yeah. And Agreed. You know, there's, I feel like there's a stigma behind mental health as a whole because um, it doesn't matter, like, all the things I just said, all like, everyone's background or ethnicity, mental health is not really talked about regardless of either mental health or men's mental health. It's not really talked about that much. Yeah. And, you know, I feel like that's a, that's a big problem. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We need more people talking about it agreed and needs to be normalized and i feel like some areas it is but then some areas it's not and then we have to look at the statistics of you know male female gay straight transgender like look at all these statistics so like oh these amount of men you know we unfortunately lose these amount of men or these amount of females or you know anything like that it's not talked about that much and it's not, you know, normalized, like you said. A hundred percent. And you know what? I feel like the reason for a very long time it wasn't normalized is because I feel like when, when people say mental health, I think people associate that with feelings. I feel like this. I feel like that. But what people fail to understand, let's think about this logically for a second. Your brain makes every decision you make Correct. from my hand's doing this right now. That hey, hey, what's going on? Right to to the words that are coming out of my mouth. Yeah. Your brain is making all of those decisions. Yeah. That's a lot of things for your brain to do all the time. That's why it needs eight hours of rest. <sighs> Minimum. Well, yeah, most I don't people. remember. I don't remember the last time I got eight hours. Right. Right. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, your, your brain does so much that it's right. like, bro, like we 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 gotta just do nothing for at least six of these hours. Correct. Right. So my thing is. Take your highest performing athlete or whatever. That person's brain makes so many important decisions. Why would you not swap the, for mental health? Swap the word feelings with thinking. What I mean by that is this. I feel insecure versus I think I am worthless. Mm. Swap those two things and it's like, okay, let's address that. Your brain, like everything else, you have doctors that specialize in physical therapy. You have doctors that spe- specialize in surgery. Like some people are nose people. Some people are, are bone struck, whatever the case may be. Yeah. This is my answer to the question. I think that mental health as a conversation should not be compartmentalized. But I do think as a, a, an issue of addressing things, it needs to be. Right. I've been to men's th- like group therapy. Best thing that has ever addressed my insecurity as a man. Best thing ever. I went to therapy therapy. 
general therapy. They give you general tips. It was cool. But until I went to men's group therapy and addressed the issue, now I go back to therapy, say, oh, that's what you meant, right? Now, it's not just that, right? We're talking, there's family therapy. There's marriage therapy, right? There's sex therapy. There's a lot of different professions that talk about not feelings, but thought patterns. That is where I think it needs to be separated, right? I've never, and here's the one caveat I'll say. I've never once heard someone say, women's mental health and i don't say that as like a negative towards women i say that towards like i think women need their own space as well i agree you know oh yeah absolutely yeah i agree 100 percent. i feel like there's certain cases where in some areas in some scenarios where they do speak about men's mental health right and sometimes in certain areas they even over speak about men's mental health but then it's like well, what about women's right. mental health? Women go through just the amount of stuff that men do. I, I feel like, you know, it's it's one of those things we try our absolute best to make, you know, everything and everybody equal. Sometimes it's hard to do that in certain yeah. scenarios where, um, you know, but I, I just, men's mental health, women's mental health. That's why I always go back to the thing, mental health in general. You know what I mean? Mental health is mental health. There's no way around it. If you're going through something, say something. That's kind of been my... Bottom line. Yeah, Yeah. bottom line, 100%. Facts. So you know what? Going through something, say something. I do do want to touch a little bit on, like, personal stories. We we spoke a little bit in the beginning about, you know, like, what motivates us in music. Now now I want to dig deeper, deeper into, like, what, like, what is your mental health story? Like, what is something that you feel comfortable sharing that has brought you to, to this conversation here? Zay, I, I want to start with you. What What is your personal story when it comes to mental health? Um, I would say just to give like a, a brief kind of summary, um, obviously super big into sports growing up. Um, basically my whole life and what I felt was my purpose was around sports. Mm-hmm. So um, going into football, um, I actually... I played basketball growing up, believe it or not, like all through my childhood up until like fourth grade or something when I moved states um, and then finally found um, football my eighth grade year. Um, I worked my ass off from uh, eighth grade all the way till about my junior year of high school. Um, starter, um, linebacker for um, the varsity team as well as um, wide receiver. So um, uh Got some awards through football and stuff like that. Like I was, I was a pretty solid player. Um, got invited to a lot of football camps, um, college scouts and stuff like that. Going through the process, had my purpose. That was my one thing in life that I knew I was going to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, going into our playoff run my junior year, um, I tweaked my back, but I didn't know what it was at the time. Uh, the game before going into the playoffs – and um, I just like could not move the left side of my body right. Like, That's scary. yeah. That's really scary. But it was like the most important games of my career at the time. So it was like icy hot, oh, like yeah. all the <clears throat> ibuprofen popping yep. those like tic tacs. I wanted to make sure I was playing. So <laughs> um, obviously, I didn't go to the doctor because I knew they'd be like, oh, you need a rest. Yep. But I had games to play. So, um, Went through the playoffs, whatever, like three more games. Unfortunately, we're knocked out of the playoffs like three rounds in. And then finally made it to uh, the doctors. Like It was like two months later from the initial reaction. Um, come to find out, I had a stress fracture on part of my spine. Nice. Uh, yeah. And so doctor basically told me like if I would have messed it up anymore, I could have been like paralyzed like from the waist down. Sorry. Yeah. And so like uh that's tough man. yeah so i remember i remember you got injured but i remember it was like yeah. to that extreme you know yeah. what i mean I, I i remember that i do because i didn't tell anybody because no, i yeah, knew yeah. if my coach 